This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Hey, welcome to the program. This is Rick Renner, and it's the end of the week. And wow, we have had a great week together. I'm talking about me and you and Joseph Z. Good to be with you, sir. I'm so glad you're here with us, Thank Joseph. Thank you for having me. You came all the way to Moscow to do this program. And what a privilege it's been. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, I wrote a book some time ago, which was called Apostles and Prophets. Do you have a copy of Apostles and Prophets? If you don't, you ought to get this because it really is going to be the go-to book on the subject of who is and who isn't an apostle or a prophet. And in this book, I state that there's a lot of people today claiming to be apostles and prophets. In fact, the list almost looks endless. Ay, ay, ay. They're not all apostles and they're not all prophets. You need to know the criteria to determine if someone is or isn't. But Joseph Z really is a prophetic brother, and I respect his ministry. If I didn't, he wouldn't be on the program with me. And I wanted you to know him. And we're doing a series which is called Breaking Hell's Economy. It's five parts. Joseph has such a revelation about breaking hell's economy. And when we talk about hell's economy, we're really talking about the world systems, a thug spirit, <laughs> which is trying to dominate the world today. Yep. How do you break that? This series is so powerful, and it comes with a wonderful study guide. And Joseph has a book by the same name. I read it from cover to cover. It's called Breaking Hell's Economy. My friends, this book is good. Now, I'm going to tell you it's rare for me to read a book from cover to cover because most books, for me, just don't have enough to say. This book says something on every single page about taking authority, exercising authority, taking back what the enemy has tried to take away from you. Breaking hell's economy is just powerful. And I want you to have this and the series, and you can have all these things if you'll just go online or give us a call, you can place an order. And please never forget that we're people of prayer. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 19, if two of you will agree as touching anything, I'll do it. We know how to get into agreement with you on the Word of God, and we'll agree in prayer. Jesus will hear us, and Jesus will do something magnificent for you. But if we know how to pray, then we can get into agreement with you in prayer. So please reach out to us by either sending us an email or calling us, and the moment the email shows up in the inbox or you call us, we're going to release our faith, and Jesus is going to move for you. But today... Joseph is going to speak to us about breaking hell's economy in your family. Amen. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. You know, one of the things about the culture right now is we're seeing, as you said, this thug spirit trying to attack every area of society. And one of the greatest areas it's attacking right now is the next generation. It's attacking people's children. It's attacking their futures, their identities. Their grandchildren. Their grandchildren. So many people are concerned about their grandchildren. Yes. And they have a reason to be concerned. They really do. And, and how, are, how is it being done? How is it attacking them? Well, it's attacking them through this, this nefarious agenda where they begin to retrain their thinking. They're stealing the words of a generation. They're redefining definitions of things. They're really trying to modify this generation to throw away their old beliefs and yes. adopt a new belief system. It is so evil what's taking place. It is evil. It's evil. To the point children in their own households, family members of their own household will fight the parents, they'll fight other people to say, no, this philosophy of the age is right. This I just read an article on the news that a woman was denied the right to adopt a child because she would not sign a, a, a paper before the adoption stating that she would be willing to give hormone-altering drugs to the child to change their gender. That's wicked. And they denied her the right to adopt. They denied it. That is wow. evil. That's evil. It is evil. It is evil. And many people are experiencing this firsthand right now. Well, we know it started when they took prayer out of schools. We know it started in many ways. The point is, there's a spirit afoot, the spirit of Antichrist, and wants to begin to steal 
the legacy. And that spirit of Antichrist is getting more and more intense. It is. You know, it started with prayer being removed from school and the devil began moving slowly, but it's not slow anymore. Not anymore. I mean, these things are now unfolding so rapidly in front of our eyes. It's true. That it's like shocking. It's like a whirlwind of change. It's true. And many believers, I mean, really good believers are saying, what do we do? It's true. What do we what do? What do we do? What do we do? The answer is, I guess we're just going to have to believe God. But the answer really is, and I say that with humor because a lot of people say, really, that's the answer? Well, if we really knew the depths of that statement, it would impact the culture. But as an individual, as a family, what do we do? Well, I think the answer is found in the life of Cornelius. Okay. Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, he was not even a believer. Do you want to go there? Let's go there. Let's go to Acts chapter 10. You got your Bible? That's so great. Remember, we use the Bible in this program. Let's go to Acts chapter 10. Well, I really enjoy it because we know in Acts chapter 10, I'll just get a running start. I'll paraphrase it. We realize that in verse 30, Cornelius said four days ago. Verse 30? Acts chapter 10, verse 30. Okay. So it says, so Cornelius said, he's saying to Peter what had happened to him and why Peter was called to him. You know, Peter is drawn there. He says, four days ago, I was fasting until this hour. And at the ninth hour, I prayed in my house and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your alms are remembered in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and Simon, come, he will come to you in all this. Then you look on beyond this into the following verses and you realize this is so powerful. You realize that Cornelius, because of his obedience, had Peter show up, Peter prays for him, they get born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, but not just Cornelius. It's the Gentile Pentecost. It's the Gentile Pentecost, but also Cornelius' entire household was born again. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Yes, the Gentile Pentecost broke loose, but the point in this, for this purpose right now, is that Cornelius' household was saved. Why? By his obedience. He did what he knew to do, where he knew to do it, and how he knew to do it. And God met him there. And because of that, God sent a man of God to come and minister to him, and his entire household was saved. Cornelius broke hell's economy off his household. And you know, I don't know if most people have realized this, but Cornelius was a centurion, Mm. which means he was pagan to his bones. Wow. I mean, he was far, far, far from the promises of God. So if if it could happen to him, it can happen to anybody. Well, that's why preaching has to happen. That's why this ministry is so important. That's why what we're doing is so vital right now, because just a seed, just information that comes to these individuals will cause them to take a step towards the Lord, take a step like this. And I believe this is a model of how people in the world can break hell's economy, even over their family. Now, how much more the believer that begins to seek the Lord, that begins to follow God. I believe through your obedience as a father, a mother, a grandparent, you can begin to push back the gates of hell. What kind of obedience? Well, if the Lord asks you to move somewhere, if the Lord asks you to be somewhere, attend a certain church, to uh, pray in a certain way, to sow, to reap, to do whatever God calls you to do. It's not just about that act. There's a domino effect that takes place. And whenever you obey God, it starts a chain reaction that I believe firmly will lead all the way to your family, Hmm. being born again. And that's God's ultimate desire. Think of Mary and Joseph, Rick. Now, you teach them this so eloquently, and everybody that knows you knows this. But Mary and Joseph, Joseph could have put Mary away. He could have not done what God called him to do. An angel appears to him, speaks to him, just like Cornelius, and says, do what you must do. Do what I tell you to do. He did it. He followed the voice of God. And what happened? Jesus was born. Jesus came on the scene. Jesus was oversaw by Joseph. And because of that obedience, he fostered a position for the Magi to show up. And the Magi brought such a currency, such a victory, that I believe it broke hell's economy over the stranglehold, even over what would have limited Jesus and his ministry. And I I just believe that. I believe something powerful happened. That really was a divine wealth transfer. It was. I mean, if, if you look at the ministry of Jesus, Jesus never publicly received an offering for his ministry. Wow. Now that is amazing because he reached multitudes and never had to seek money for it because the money all showed up. That's a pretty good way to break out of hell's economy. Is that that amazing? It's profound, Rick. Well, think about this though. It all started with Joseph and Mary. Well, really Mary, then Joseph. 
The Lord asked Mary, will you do this? The angel asked her. She said, I'm your servant. And Joseph obeyed God also. They broke hell's economy off Jesus, off their family, by obedience. It was a domino effect, a chain reaction. Cornelius did the same. You see this over and over again in Scripture. And our families are no different. God wants to reach our families. He wants to break them out of the grip of hell. He wants to break them out of this system, this Babylonian corrupt antichrist system. So I really want to help my TV family. So be specific. Yes. What do you do to break it off of your family? You obey God. You do what you can, where you can, as you can. If God tells you to sow, you sow. If God leads you to move somewhere, you go there. And there's a ripple effect or there's a domino effect. Yes. I like something you said this week, that when you do something in the natural... Oh, you'll get a supernatural reaction. you get a Corinthians, supernatural reaction. In 1 Corinthians 15, Rick, verse 46, it says the spiritual is not first, but the natural. And that's, of course, talking about Jesus and Adam, the life-giving spirit. You realize, though, that there's a principle in this. The spirit is not first, but the natural. Then comes the spirit. I see it this way. There's a principle that if you do something in the natural... I, I, I word it this way. If you do the difficult, God will do the impossible. If you do something difficult in faith or you stretch out and you obey him, not that it's always difficult, but if you do something in faith in the natural, God will do the impossible. For example, if you in the natural lay your hands on somebody and That's pray, correct. God will do the supernatural. That's right. If you sow a seed, God will, molt, he'll do the supernatural part. That's if right. you open your mouth and speak to somebody about Jesus, God will open their eyes or give them eyes to That's see. That's right. That's cooperation, the great co-mission. It's really sowing and reaping. It really is. So you got to do something in the natural if you want to break hell's economy. That's right. That's right. The natural is is taken action by faith. You must take action by faith in the natural to get a supernatural reaction. You know, you keep saying, even go to the right church. That's right. Well, you know, being in the right place at the right time oh, man. is very important. It's so important. And today it's almost a consumer society where people go wherever they want, whenever they want, however they want. And I'm not necessarily against all of that, but I got to say, you got to go where God calls you. That's where your anointing is. That's where your provision is. That's where your children will bloom. And I have a personal example from my life. A number of years ago, the Lord asked us, he said, I want you to sit down for a season and just listen to me and do what I ask you to do. Now, Rick, we'd been very busy. We've been building ministry. We've been broadcasting. We've been doing many things. And the Lord asked me, he said, Joseph, if you'll rest for a season with your family, just sit down for a moment, I will bless them. Was that hard for you to do? Very hard, Rick. We're men of action. <laughs> and the Lord had called me to do many things, but I knew I had to do that. And when I did it, I found that my family was completely and totally in a healthy place. You know, there's always a grace to help you do what is hard. Yes. But that doesn't mean that it's not hard. Doesn't mean it's not hard. Actually, when you finally surrender to it, it becomes easier because the grace comes. Yes. You work with the grace of God. Yes. But coming to a place of surrender to go to the right church, and sometimes you don't want to be in the right church, but you know it's where you're supposed to That's be. That's right. But there really will be a supernatural reaction, being in the right place at the right time, doing what God has told you to do. In fact, I will tell you the secret to my ministry. Yes. It's not because we're smart. <laughs> it's just because we did what we were told. Wow. In fact, one day I said to the Lord, why did you choose me? With all the things I know about me, why did you choose me? Yeah. He said, because I knew you would do what I asked you to do. Powerful. And when you do the natural part, the supernatural part always shows up. Praise God. And of course, we're talking about breaking hell's economy. We are. And people experiencing God in their families. Yes. It's so vital when you understand this. And many people are grieved right now. As a matter of fact, I want to pray for many people. Let's do it. I sense so powerfully that there are people that you're watching this and you've been struggling in your family. There are people that have left your sphere of influence, maybe children, maybe grandchildren, maybe someone close to you. But I sense the world's voice been so strong in your household. God wants to break them out. It is not God's desire that your family goes and serves the world. Not at all. And I know it's not your desire. So let's come into agreement right now. The Lord is saying to many of you, and I sense this in my spirit so powerfully, that it is not his will that they leave. He will never leave you nor forsake you. 
and his hand is going out right now. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every circumstance that has driven children, grandchildren away from their family, driven them towards the world. We send out the laborers in the harvest right now to draw them back. How dare you touch the Lord's anointed devil? How dare you come at some of these families? I begin to release strength over our viewers today in Jesus' name. And we call your children home in Jesus' name. We call them back to the service and relationship with the Lord God Almighty. God is not going to leave them, not going to forsake them. Somebody just had a surgery. I'm watching this right now. Somebody just had a surgery. You went through a surgical procedure, and at the end of that, you began to have a stress and turmoil over family at the end of this surgical narrative. And the Lord is saying unto you, I'm going to intervene on your behalf right now, right now today in Jesus' name. I declare there'll be phone calls. I declare there's going to be restoration and there's going to come a time of justice and shaking in the United States specifically. And when that happens, expect your phone to ring. Expect goodness to come. Expect God to use what darkness is trying to manifest. He will use it for the good of the family. He will use it for the good of a response to bring people out of darkness and into light. It won't all be bad, believe me. God's going to use the wickedness to bring, to bring light to pass and cause life into your household. I see it over you, many of you right now, that the spirit of Antichrist has tried to bring a heavy weight, a heavy burden on so many people. And the Lord is saying, do not fall for it. Don't shrink back. This is your greatest hour. On a bad day, you're called to be the best there is. I see somebody right now, and there's this circumstance where you've been driving, and you get stressed out when you're driving because you're thinking about what's going on in the culture. You're thinking about what's happening. And the Lord is saying unto you, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. I see a banker in the name of Jesus. There's going to be strength over this banking scenario. God's going to work out the narrative for how to manage resources and be an advisor to a greater capacity. I see you working out things for nonprofit organizations and helping people at a greater capacity. There's going to come another wind, a second wind for this 501c3 narrative. I see something with this right now where God's going to begin to help people. He's going to begin to bring a new wisdom and a new force of legal power that will stand up for the church in this next year. I see strength coming with that and victory coming with it. The spirit of might is going to break this thug intimidation spirit off of your family, off of your children. The Holy Spirit is roaring for victory in your house. He's going to do this. Somebody has a cooking business. You're going to step out with cooking. You're going to begin to do things that has to do with uh, culinary arts, and you're doing things as a service for people. And the Lord's saying, I'm putting prosperity on that. There will be a hot sauce on that, and it's going to bring strength out for many in the name of Jesus. Many of you are going to get a revelation that your business is is your ministry. And you're going to see God touch people through that in Jesus' mighty name. I hear the word social security, social security. And the Lord is saying unto you, I am your social security. I am your provider. I will make a way where there's been no way in the middle of darkness. When the world goes down, get ready to go up because God has called you, God has marked you, and this is your finest hour. If you do the difficult, which is simply obeying God. God will do the impossible. This is your greatest day. This is your greatest hour. God has called you at this time. We love you so much. Amen. Joseph, why did you write this book? The Lord spoke to me. He spoke to me about this so you, hour. You did something in the natural. That's right. And there's really been a supernatural reaction because so many people have been helped by this book. But if, if somebody orders this book and they read it, Yes. What's it going to do for them? It'll give them revelation to stand in darkness. They won't be afraid. They'll know what to do. That's powerful. Yeah. Wow. I'm so glad you've been with me today. Thank you, Rick. It's been great. Thank you. Now, I want to tell you that next week I've asked Joseph to stay with me again. And next week we're going to be talking about the ministry of angels. That's right. It's really powerful. Yes. Angels. Angels. Angels are on assignment to serve you. And you don't want to miss next week because he has a revelation about angelic ministry. But hey, we'll be back in just a moment. And Joseph and I are going to pray for you together. Joseph Z and Rick Renner sat down to discuss God's plan to use the church and obedient believers to break hell's economy in these last days. Hell's economy is represented in every world system where the dark God of this world has ruled. 
But God wants to use the church, and He wants to use you to break the devil's grip on the world's systems that are around you. In this eye-opening five-part series with Joseph Z and Rick Renner, you'll learn what exactly is hell's economy that needs to be broken? How to identify the areas where the dark God of this world is exercising His rule? How God wants to use the church and you to be a wrecking ball to destroy the devil's works? This captivating series is available in digital and physical format starting at just $10. We're also offering you Joseph Z's riveting best-selling book, Breaking Hell's Economy, your guide to last day's supernatural provision. This is not your typical book. It's truly an eye-opening revelation of where the devil is working in the world around us and what we as believers need to do to tear down his demonic influences in family, friends, and in areas of life that we see and experience every day. Lay hold of this revelation, defy hell, and live your life knowing you are destined to thrive in the last days. Order your copy of Breaking Hell's Economy today for $22. Don't miss this special offer, the five-part series Breaking Hell's Economy and the book Breaking Hell's Economy by Joseph Z. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner, and today I'm standing in the big studio in our new building in Moscow. You helped us build this building. Behind me is the big fireplace. It's covered. That's really the focus of the new studio. There's going to be library shelves and so many wonderful things. And I'm going to be sitting right here teaching the Bible verse by verse, diving into the Greek New Testament to bring teaching that people can trust to the ends of the world. And when I tell you the ends of the world, I really mean that. People are reaching out to us from the farthest ends of the world saying thank you for bringing this teaching right to where we are. But thank you so much for helping us. We really do what we say we're going to do, so here it is. And at the same time, we've been retiring the debt on the big Tulsa facility. That facility is so wonderful. And from that office in Tulsa, we are ministering to the needs of our partners. Partner ministry is not secondary to us. It is first place. We really mean it when we call people partners. And in that Tulsa facility, we're taking calls, making calls, touching lives, and strengthening people who need to be strengthened. That's God's mandate to us to strengthen those that are weak and those who need to be stronger. And we're reaching out by faith and through various means to touch people. And what a pleasure it is. It's really an honor to have partners. And that means you. Thank you for being a partner. And right now, we're paying off that Tulsa facility and a lot of it has already been paid off. That's miraculous. But it's been possible because of the grace of God the favor of God, and because of your faithful and generous giving. And I want to say thank you on behalf of me and Denise and our sons, our family, and our ministry team for the way that you've joined hands with us to help retire the debt on that building. My friends, when that building is paid off, it will suddenly release a flood of finances so we can take the teaching of the Bible even further to the ends of the earth. And that's God's call to us. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And that's our task, to feed many the word of God. And today I wanna to thank you for what you've done to help us build this facility and to pay off the Tulsa building. And together we can get this done. This has been so rich being with Joseph this week. And I just feel led to ask you if you have anything else to minister to our audience. I do, Rick. I, I have a sense for the audience right now. And it's this. The great merging is here. God is going to begin to bring many of you together in unlikely alliances and some people you thought you would never work with, some people you thought were on the other side of the tracks, so to speak. God is going to begin to unite. If it's too small, men fight. But if things are big enough, men unite. And I see God bringing a great uniting, emerging in the culture where many will come together and stand as a united front. I see the Lord bringing a spirit of forgiveness and grace between people. You're going to experience this in many of your relationships. The spirit of love, grace, and forgiveness is going to lead you and guide you in this next season now. 
and the merging will happen, and that is also how God will use your life to break out of hell's economy. I see victory coming for people. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes. Well, I want you to order the series, which is called Breaking Hell's Economy. It's five parts. It comes in all kinds of formats. It's Joseph Z with Rick Renner. It's mainly Joseph Z. I get so much out of his ministry, and I know that you will really thrive if you'll hear this. And it comes with a study guide. And we're also offering you Joseph's book, which is called Breaking Hell's Economy, Your Guide to Last Day's Supernatural Provision. Well, that's okay, but the book is really bigger than that. It's really about invading every system where the devil is trying to operate in your life and breaking it. And if you're ready to see some of those things break in your life, storm the gates of hell, and experience new freedom, then you need to read this book called Breaking Hell's Economy. It's one of the most positive, encouraging books that I have ever read in my life. And Joseph, before we end today, how can my TV family find you? Well, you can find us at josephz.com or you can go to any of the social media pages, Joseph Z on any social media. We go live every single weekday morning, Colorado time. And we're so grateful. At 7 a.m. At 7 a.m. Colorado time. 8, 8, 8 a.m. Central time. And I'm there every day, but I'm watching from Moscow. So for me, it's 5 p.m. You know, and I watch you every day. You do. I do. I love this program. Partners of Renner Ministries, thank you so much. We are fruit of you. And thank you for standing with Rick. Well, that's a blessing. But I want us to pray for our audience. Okay. Okay, sir. Father, in the name of Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. Joseph and I together pray. Thank you, Lord. And you know, I particularly felt today that some of you have children and grandchildren that have hooked up with the wrong person in a relationship. That's right. And it's broken your heart, but they're going to come home. And what's going to surprise you is when they come home, they're going to bring that person with them. So it's not just going to be one person who comes back home, but two are going to come back to the Lord Hallelujah. and maybe even more. The devil has tried to take your loved one down, and the end result is there's going to be a harvest of people coming to Christ. God is going to move. I saw that today while Joseph was ministering. And we pray right now Hallelujah. as Joseph prophesied and ministered that every wandering person would wake up. Lord, we know that you don't do evil things in anybody's life, but Lord, we pray that through events that are experienced, they will wake up and say, what in the world am I doing? Like the prodigal, wake up and say, what am I doing here when I could be home? That's right. And Lord, that they will come running home. Yes, Lord. And bring their friends with them. The <laughs> devil will be sorry for what he did because he's not just going to lose one, he's going to lose several in the process. Yes. And we thank you for this, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Man. Amen. Amen. Well, next week I'm going to be back with Joseph and we're going to talk about the ministry of angels. Don't miss it. But remember that if you have a specific prayer need, reach out to us. We really will pray for you. So if you'll send us an email or give us a call, we will begin to release our faith for you. And today is the last day that you can order all these pro uh, products. So please go online or give us a call. And remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.